A common question I have been asked in the last few days is how long should my queries take? What is an appropriate execution time for these particular queries? My answer has been, let's not worry about the time your query takes. As long as it doesn't time out, don't worry. And um, in the second part of the course, we will learn more about performance and how um, the DBMS executes a query, and in some instances, how we can actually help the DBMS improve uh, performance. And uh, But um, I want to give you a baseline. I'm going to show you the time that my queries take. I'm not arguing that my queries are the fastest. I didn't create them for um, um, optimizing for speed. I created them just to answer the question. And, uh, but that will give you an idea in terms of first, how long a query that answers that question will take. And second, I'll give you a couple of tools that you can use to uh, evaluate performance. And uh, so let's go to the, to the DBMS. And um, I'm going to run my queries with backslash I. Um, if you remember, we can put the query in a text file and then we can do backslash I and, uh, and the contents of the file are read and then um, are executed. So um, let's run uh, the first query. Uh, it's going to take uh, some time and, um, and then it will output uh, the results, okay? So perfect, so that's the answer that we expect. And, uh, and you can time it, right? You can have um, your, your, your watch and then see how many seconds uh, it has. But we discussed in the classroom that there are some tools that the DBMS has for this particular case. Um, let's run this of the following query. Let's do a group by uh, of all the productions. And uh, so this query takes a long time to execute. And you might be wondering why. Well, the DBMS doesn't know that this table cannot be modified. And uh, so it will try to compute the result every single time that um, we issue it. And that means that it has to go through every single uh, tuple of the relation and then count it. Okay. And um, so we can say uh, explain analyze. And what explain analyze does is that um, it executes the query, it still uh, does all the work, but it doesn't output the result. Instead, it outputs two parts. It outputs the execution plan and it outputs the time that it actually took to compute uh, the query. As we will see, it will also output the time that it thinks it will take. So here's actually a uh, estimation. So the estimation that the DBMS has um, is two milliseconds, but it actually took um, 22 seconds. Why are the numbers so um, off? Well, partially because I have not optimized the uh, statistics in the DBMS to re properly reflect how much time it takes to read from disk. So there's work that the DB administrator has to do to actually get an execution plan that is um, accurate. And, uh, but what really matters for the DBMS is not how long it will actually take but the comparison. So the, the DBMS will try to find two or more ways to execute a query, if possible, and it will try to compare them across them. So as long as that comparison is consistent, it doesn't really matter that the times are off, okay? And um, so that's why it still um, is able to perform um, appropriately. But let me run the query again, and, um, and then let's actually see how consistent it is. Well, it's a big difference, right? From 22 seconds, it went down to one second. So here's the first uh, observation I want to make. The performance of a query depends on the caching that the DBMS has done. If um, the query has requires information that is already cached in, uh, in memory, then uh, it will run faster than the first time that we execute it. Uh, let's go back to our um, assignment one question. And uh, I'm going to run it with explain analyze. And we can actually see. So it takes actually two seconds to execute. Let's run it again. Now it took six seconds to execute. So it went from 
uh, yeah, it's a long plan from two seconds into six seconds. So there's a lot of variability, um, uh, 0.3 uh, uh, seconds. There's a lot of variability in terms of how how much time a query takes. Now you can actually see it goes uh, to 0.1 seconds, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.1 seconds. And uh, so um, this is the first thing that you should be concerned when you run your queries. It's not how long it takes uh, the worst case scenario, but um, once you start running it continuously, um, how long will it actually take? Um, that's what I say. Uh, that's, that's why I said that uh, let's not worry too much about the actual time that it takes, as long as it doesn't take five seconds in your worst case scenario. Um, sorry, uh, five five minutes. As long as it doesn't take five minutes in your worst case scenario, uh, you're okay. Um, let's run the query analyze for the second result. Uh, trust me, this actually computes the result. We can actually see that in uh, in in um, after we run this. So um, it will take a few seconds to do it here. So we have 8.8 .8, uh, seconds to execute it. Let run, let's run it again. Hopefully it will be relatively close to that, six seconds. Let's run it again. Six seconds, so it's starting to settle around that. Uh, let's run the actual query. Well, um, let's let's see the results of the query. So um, you can see that that's what we are um, running. Okay, so that's what we expect from this query. Let me run the query um, analyze, the uh, explain analyze. The execution plan that we get is very complex because this is actually a big uh, query, big um, with respect to most queries. So um, it's hard to read this information. So don't worry if you if you cannot make any sense of the execution plan. That's not our concern now. Okay, our concern should just be that um, the time that the query actually takes. Um, let's run now um, the third query, uh, q3e.sql. So let's also run it with um, the explain analyze. And uh, this is my longest query. And so it's actually uh, around um, 15 lines that I wrote uh, for this query. The other two queries are um, a little bit shorter. So this one took six uh, seconds. Um, Interesting that most of them take around six seconds when we run it, but I run it again and look now it took 81 milliseconds. The same query took 81 milliseconds. It basically means that almost all the information is probably now cached and so I have to go to the disk. 82, 81, 82, 80, 80, 80, 80, 81. So um, let's finally run it. And that's actually the result. So the result is what we expect. Uh, for this query. So um, the take home message of this video is um, number one, don't worry how long it takes to run your queries as long as they don't time out. Second, uh, the time that a query takes depends on many, many, many different factors. And in fact, uh, it's not consistent from one run to the other, depending on what information is in the DBMS and also the number of, of processes that they're actually running. At this time, I suspect that there are very few people, if any, running queries. So I'll probably have the entire DBMS for myself. But if you get closer to the deadline, you will start to compete for resources. And that means that your queries will run slower. And finally, um, that you can use explain analyze to be able to get an idea of how much time your query takes. Okay. And that's all for this video.